So this morning I was going through my videos like I usually do on a daily basis to see what is interesting and what could send some sorts of message to these maniacs on the road in a Jamaica. I came across one specific video. In this video, the driver of a public passenger vehicle, minibus, them call it Costa. It seems as if he had a high demand for passengers that want to go about their business. So he decided that he is going to take one more on top of the park bus that he had. He decided, where am I going to put this person? He thought about it and then he came up with a decision. I am going to put that person in the driver's seat. Then I am going to sit in that person's lap. And then I am going to drive these people about their merry business as if it is just another day in paradise. People, I want you to take a listen, take a look at this video and then I'll give my peace. So people, I had to mute the audio because it was playing some sorts of pop or soul music. YouTube's policy don't allow that. However, the video was quite clear. You saw exactly the driver on the right of your screen. Sitting in the lap of a lady, the music was playing and she was pretty much tapping the rhythm or the beat of that music on his back. Now people, in that video... I did not hear anybody complaining. I did not hear anybody saying, hold on a minute, driver. I saw you go drive. As a matter of fact, the driver was en route wherever its destination was, and the people seems as if they were comfortable. Now, people, truth be known, in a Jamaica, sometimes if you talk, people might lash out, even the passengers in which their lives are in danger. Sometimes a lot of these persons that are driving minibus, public passenger vehicle, them are bad man themselves, so therefore they are bullies. So people don't want to say anything and the next thing them know, say, them get thrown to the bus. And even in some instances in which these drivers are driving like a maniac, a mad bat out of hell, and one person talk up, everybody wants to go where they want to go in a rush, so therefore they might even... Turn on that one person. That person might feel uncomfortable, even though they might be the only sensible person in the bus. Now, when we look at this, we can come to the conclusion that this is the only place on Mars or God Earth where we could see this because it seems as if Jamaica is an anything goes society. People don't even know wrong from right, and even the person that is right. He might be in the minority. It seems as if the majority of the people are too D-U-M-B, ignorant to what is safe, or they just don't care, or they just don't give a F-U-C-K. They are tolerant to anything. Had this been any other nation except for Jamaica, especially in America, that bus would not have moved. Nobody, 99.99% of the people in that bus would be asking the driver, are you losing your mind? Are you senseless? Do you really expect us to let you drive this bus while you're sitting in the driver's seat in a somebody lap as if a mama and baby? If this was America, like me say, this driver would be D-R-U-G-S tested. He would be tested for his mental stability. Because you cannot be sensible to do something like that. Especially a place like Jamaica where we see so much reckless, senseless D-E-A-T-H on the street because of people like this. And I also want to question the mentality or the state of mind of this lady. 
Obviously, she is not a stranger, I am assuming, because no sensible stranger would agree or allow the driver of a bus to sit in their lap while they drive the bus with other passengers in this vehicle. So it shows you the Skatalina anything goes mentality that exists in Jamaica. This is yet a next perfect example. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, unless you've been living on the rock, you wouldn't have known that Jamaica was hit by a Category 4 hurricane. Beryl, it is called. A whole lot of person lost everything. A whole lot of person lost most of their stuff. Places were flooded. People lost farm product. People lost roof, houses. People lost their life most of the time because of stupidity. We saw that a lot of Jamaicans came out and they were helping each one be his brother or sister's keeper. However, you and I know that Jamaica is a land of exploiters, people that take advantage of persons' situation, especially when they are in a dire street. Bad situation. I want you to take a listen, take a look at these pictures and videos. And you see there is a boat and you see that that place is flooded. I am speaking about a place called Big Pond that is in Old Harbour. It is on the main road going to Red Ground to Old Harbour that is in St. Catherine. Based on the information that I am getting, this is not caused by only the flood or the hurricane. It is said that even when there is a regular hard rainfall, the people block the drain. So therefore, when they block the drain, they can then exploit the community who will then have to use the boat, one of those boats that you see in the picture before this. Based on the information that I am getting, it is said that the average charge in the day is a thousand Jamaican. In the night, three thousand Jamaican dollars to use the boat. To go back and forth to get out of your community and get to a community where you can take care of your business. Now people, you and I know that Jamaica have some of the nicest people. However, when it comes to exploitation in the highest or lowest heights, Jamaicans will hustle you for their own monetary gain. And people, if you look at this neighborhood, it is obvious this is no sort of uptown community. So therefore, we would assume that you have poor people living in there. Just imagine how somebody is going to find 2,000, 3,000 or even 1,000 to go about their daily commutes. Check how much money that, especially when purses are devastated, especially when purses are down. You do not step in people's head when they are down. If anything, you try to help them up, try to rise them. But we know that Jamaican people, they are the worst of the worst. And if the information that I am getting is true, this is very shameful. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that controversial selector Futa Hype, he made some posts on his live and he was pretty much saying that him kind of mad with Bojo Bantan because Bojo Bantan is having two big shows in a New York City, two dates back to back. And Bojo Bantan decided that he is not going to use Futa Hype as a DJ or one of the DJ for that night or any of those two nights. So Futa is claiming that Imam Bujabantan are friends and friends should not treat friends like that. Now people, here's the thing. First thing first, business and friendship don't mix like two D-I-C-K-S and no chicks. So therefore, Bujabantan is not obligated to you. Bojo Bantan is making a business decision and this business decision he is going to put selectors that he know the crowd are probably familiar with. He is going to have his show, he is going to have other artists perform. So therefore he is making a decision based on solely business. This is not personal. Futa Hype is claiming that Bojo Bantan basically diss him because while Bojo Bantan was locked up, he was playing Bojo Bantan's music. He was promoting Bojo Bantan very hard. People, here's the thing. 
Bojobantan and Futahype share a symbiotic relationship. What that means, both parties benefit. The fact that Bojobantan is a big artist with a known catalog of classic songs. Futahype and any other selector that are going to play music that are like Bojobantan has no choice. Because it is what we call demand and supply. So therefore, people are going to want to hear the songs that are hot. Bojo Bantan happens to have some of the hottest songs in a dancehall and reggae music. So therefore, it is going to be beneficial for both. You were not helping Bojo Bantan and people. I am not going to say that he did not assist in Bojo Bantan's career and kept him relevant. However, he is just like any other average DJ, whether it is radio, whether it is selector. So therefore, he is no different. That would not change Bojo's mind in saying that, well, it seems as if Futa High fall in a different category. No, you are just one of many selectors. Nothing special about you. In the eyes of Bojo Banton, whether you are friends or, or you were friends or not, Business and friendship don't mix. So my point is that Bojo Bantan is making a business decision. He is not looking at this as personal. And you have to understand Bojo Bantan is signed to Rock Nation. Rock Nation are stern business people. Rock Nation don't want persons affiliating with their company that have any sort of stigma of any source of G-A-Y-B-A-S-H-I-N-G. -I, I am not saying that they are not promoting certain agenda. I am not saying that they are for pro or con against whatever. But me just I say, they are not going to put anybody on the program to be any sorts of selector or artist that come with any sorts of negative stigma that are homophobic. And when it comes to footer hype, he is probably the most homophobic person out there right now. So therefore, while persons might respect your agenda of straight nation, that is what you choose. When it comes to business, People are not going to do anything to jeopardize their business. They are not going to lose anybody, any sorts of patrons, whether they are straight or whether they are lean. So therefore, if them know, say, somebody that is constantly out there, which you always are, B-A-S-H-I-N-G, these people are standing up for your rights and you have the rights to do so. But me just I say, you have to understand when you chose a certain agenda, there is going to be backlash. There is going to be negative stigma. So like the saying goes, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So therefore, when you spread a certain agenda, that is the response that you're going to get from most business persons especially in America, where you're at. So even while this is Bojo Banton's show, Bojo Banton answers to a higher authority. He answers to the people that he is signed to. So therefore, maybe he might make most of the decision, maybe all of the decision he has to sign or co-sign on them. However, when these people sit down and talk, and make a decision who they are going to choose for this show or these shows. You are not going to fall in the criteria that fits the agenda or the program that they are trying to run. Because them know so you cannot regulate your mouth and you cannot regulate your feelings when it comes to certain topics, when it comes to straight nation, when it comes to lean people. So they are going to be concerned. Can we give this man a chance? Will he make his mouth lead him astray? Will he get emotional and start to play songs like Boom Bye Bye in a fishy people head rate lately? People are not going to be willing to take those chances, especially when millions of dollars are riding on it. Not talking about Jamaican, I am speaking about US. So even though in Futa Hype's demented mind, he might still consider himself as one of the top selectors and people, I am not going to question his skill sets. I am not going to question his juggling ability. However, what I am going to question is the fact that 
He is no longer known as a top selector. He is now known as a controversial selector that pretty much cannot keep his foot out his mouth, that pretty much speaks all sorts of controversial stuff about controversial people, artists, anybody. He has something to say, and most of the time, it has to be with some sorts of homophobic slur behind it. So therefore, persons are going to be concerned, and rightfully so. So you have to realize that when Buju Bantan and his team sat down and they made a decision as to who to hire, who is going to play selector? Who is going to be the DJ? Who are going to be the arts, including Bojo Bantan? They are going to go with what is current, what is hot. When you talk about a place like New York, they have some of the best DJs, radio DJs, disc jockey. So therefore, those DJs are current people in the New York area in which the both shows are going to be kept are familiar with these people. Most persons, except for the Jamaican diaspora, probably don't know who Futa Ibe is, and I am not discrediting what he has done, me just as say. The people are going to go with who is current, who is hot. When they think about Futa Hype, they are thinking about controversy and drama. They are not thinking about some sorts of selector that can select music. They are thinking about what this person is going to do, what this person is going to say. Is there going to be some sorts of drama, mix up, pasa pasa, power show, in which we are trying to avoid badly? So at the end of the day, even if Bojo Bantan wanted you on his show, I am sure he would not get the approval from his partners in this business venture. Because these people are going to look at it. Listen, Bojo Bantan, remember, you get deported. Remember, you was charged with a specific crime and you get a second chance, a second lease on life. Look out for thine self. Do not try to see if other people are trying to help other people. In the meantime, you are bringing down yourself. Do not take any sorts of chance with this loose cannon, loose ball, and lose it all. Because when we look at Futa Hype's past relationship, whether it is baby mother, we saw the amount of drama, and let's not get it twisted. Aishana is full of controversy and drama too. When we look at the relationship as it pertains to Bounty Killer, the person that pretty much bust Futa Hype, some sorts of symbiotic relation. Yes, Futa Hype was hot at the time when Bounty Killer get all sorts of promotion. So therefore, there was a joint venture in which both of them benefited. However, you and I saw how it turned out all sorts of disrespect. The same can be said about Movado, which is a DJ that he actually broke in the business. However, we see how that end. So at the end of the day, I am just saying everybody that this man has any sort of relationship with, he is a type of person that after or if it goes bad, he is going to try to bring that person down. He always seems to have his side of the story. However, other persons also have other side of the story. Whatever the truth is, I am just saying, Futa Hype always finds himself in a some sort of controversy, drama, mix-up, and pasa pasa, And people are trying to avoid it, especially when it comes to business. It is bad for business. So like I said at the start of this video, cock mouth kills cock. And your mouth is going to put you in problem. And that is the case as it pertains to Futa Hype. Futa Hype has his agenda and people should respect people's agenda. However, when it comes to the music business, it is all inclusive. That means eh, if you're straight, if you're bent, all are included because that is where the money is. The more people that is going to buy the product are buy into the product. It is going to be better for business. So while you have your stance and what you feel about a particular set of people, you cannot be forcing other persons to join in that agenda. I have heard Futa Hype claiming that Bojo Bantan should still play Boom Bye Bye, Ray Te, Lele, Blue Blah Bling. So therefore, if you are giving persons that type of advice, these persons are not going to listen to you. 
Bojabantan got a backlash because of that. So therefore, Bojabantan is going to try to disassociate himself from anything that is homophobic. Is he agreeing with them? No, but he knows he shall not say anything. It is best for you to be quiet. You decide that that is your agenda to pick up that straight nation agenda. So therefore, that is what you do. However, you have to have people or make people do what is comfortable for them. Do what is best for their career. Do what is best for their music. And that is what purse are about. Success. I am not saying that you are supposed to bow. I just I say, leave people business alone. Let people do whatever they so choose. As long as they are not crossing you or jumping by your back, you should just let people do what they do. At the end of the day, this is music. The music has some sorts of agenda. Nobody is questioning that. But I just I say, you are too passionate you put in too much effort in the agenda that you're trying to sell and at the end of the day it is pretty much too late right now the horse has basically jumped out of the gate long long time a couple of decades ago and it is only going to get worse and what is even more controversial for a person that is always claiming straight nation you decide to fight Go through the immigration process being locked up in a chrome or in an immigration detention and you are living in the epicenter of the fishery. Let me understand that. Make it make sense. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. And last but not least, please subscribe to my next channel. It is called Jamaica Dancehall Source. I'll be pinning the link to that channel in the description of this video. Bless up.